up bright enough? Are you even focusing on me? I haven't done this in a long, long time. Oh, there it goes. No. Hello. It's been a minute. So I wanted to make a video on an eye mechanism that goes inside your doll head that allows your doll's eyes to move around. The coolest thing about it is there's no need for hot glue, there's no need for eye putty, there's no need for any of that ugh that I hate dealing with. When I'm photographing my dolls, the last thing that I really want to do is take the wig off, take the head cap off, reposition the eyes, get it all set, put it back together, and then just hope it works out. It's an unnecessary pain in the ass. Okay. So I have recently jumped back into ho jumped. I have recently jumped back into the hobby, however, I am kind of straying away from the resin side of things and have moved to the vinyl side of things. More specifically, Dolphy Dreams. Um, cat, go away! Also, we have another cat. Great. So, uh, yeah, I'm now the owner of a uh, Dolphy Dream. This is a Dolphy Dream sister body, the Karen Sculpt. She is prettybomb.com, don't even know if that focused. It's fine if not, you'll see her face a lot more in a minute. The item that I'm talking about is inside her little skull right here and it allows her eyes to be able to be moved around. Keep in mind, this is my first voiceover, so it's a little rough. It's also been a very hot second since I've been on YouTube. The audio quality isn't the best. It's not the worst, but we'll deal with it. Also, I apologize for the length of the video. I tried to cut it down as much as I could. However, I felt like there was a lot of information that I wanted to leave in the video. So I cut out, sped up, and did what I could to shorten it as much as possible without reducing any knowledge from the video. Um, so just, yeah, enjoy. Alright, so I've originally had a Dolphy Dream Fitter inside my um, doll head. This is basically just a piece of foam that, with pressure, pushes uh, the bulk's eyes against the eye wells, keeping them in place without having to worry about putty or glue or anything like that. Um, it's marketed as an item that will allow you to move your eyes around. Really, the only thing that I notice is that you can twist them. That's about it. Twist them around in, in their socket, which most people don't really want to do. You want to be able to turn them from left to right. And range of motion for that was pretty bleak, as you saw. This is just me showing you what attaches to the back of the actual eye. Um, it's a official Volks eye with this product. I think they're meant to fit on the little peg, and they just give the back piece a little bit extra mobility to spin in place. Okay, so this is what my item looked like when I got it out of the post. It all comes in a nice little Ziploc baggie, or at least it did for me. Several little pieces, so kind of be careful when you're opening it. So here I'm just kind of examining the piece, kind of getting a feel for what it is, just appreciating its majestic engineering. Um, and just playing around with it inside the head to kind of see where I want to place it and see how it fits. The video is great and all, but you know, nothing beats um, first hand experience. One of my original ideas was to merge both items together to try to get like optimal mobility for the eyes. However, after messing around with it for a little bit, I felt like the extra plastic pieces would possibly be too heavy for the spring to support properly. So I opted away from that. Um, here I'm just taking apart the pieces to kind of set them in and just, again, get more of a spacing um, guesstimate. With this item, you basically hot glue it into the head, which we'll show you later on. And I wanted to make sure that I put it in the right area. Foreshadowing, I did not, so stay tuned for that enjoyment. So I know I needed to glue this entire white base down to the head. So at some point in the future, that's going to be completely secured. Um, I originally wanted to just put hot glue on the gold screws on either end and allow the two silver screws to still be able to be screwed further down. The creator made this in an attempt to create more stability, so if all of the white part wasn't touching your doll head, you could then push those screws further down or screw them further down to make contact with the um, vinyl for more support. At this point, I was trying to kind of respect that idea and keep those available so I could then just copy that. It was a great idea in concept. However, I think it's unnecessary. Um, later on, I'll kind of talk, touch more on that, but you eventually cover the entire thing with hot glue anyway, so it wasn't really necessary to have those two middle screws. In a perfect world, I place this correctly, they're set, everything's gonna go great, I'm gonna slip the eyes in, and we're done. That's kind of how the creator videos make it seem, and I suppose if you've done this a million times, like they probably have, that 
that could work. However, mine did not. <laughs> I ran into several issues. Um, firstly, I was trying to follow the video, which was to put spacers in, put the black felt tabs on, all of that. Uh, and it just, it gave me so many issues. I, there wasn't enough space between the actual head and the mechanism to slide in the eye kips. So that was just giving me major issues. I also, for some reason, completely forgot that I could just take the top half of the uh, mechanic apart to, say, add the black felt tips. So as you can see, I'm trying to put these black felt stickers on the white tabs through the eye holes, which is just really dumb now that I look back on it. This is just an increased risk to damaging a face up. It's highly unnecessary. So just remember, if you do get this item, you can just get it placed and then unscrew the top piece to work on whatever it is you need to work on. Here I am struggling like a trying to get all of this to work together and getting super frustrated and realizing that it's not going to work. I eventually remembered that I could unscrew the top and thought, oh sweet, I'll just unscrew the top half, put the eyes where they need to go, and we'll just make it work. However, that was easier said than done. As a matter of fact, I was still unable to get it um, to place in there properly. I couldn't get the pressure to sit on the eyes appropriately, so once I would get one eye in, I would try to do the other side and it would just pop out. I got super frustrated with this, and then I realized that I actually had the whole thing too close to the eye holes. All right, so this is where things went south. Um, I realized that I didn't have enough space in between the actual vinyl head and the eye mechanism to allow the chips, or the, I'm sorry, the eyes to be able to be set in. So I needed to take the mechanism back out and move it back probably about a centimeter. To do this, I just unscrewed the top half and then just pulled on the lower half. So looking back at this, this is 110% my fault. I roughhoused this thing way too much, um, especially for what it is. I knew that it was a smaller piece. I knew that it was lightweight, it was delicate. Its structure is already a little bit compromised for the fact that there's four holes drilled into it to allow screw settings. Um, and customization for individual doll heads. So, watching this again, I shouldn't have been just pulling on it as rough as I was. Uh, I needed to be a little bit more delicate. But anyway, back to the video. For about three minutes, I was really kind of miffed with just everything in general. I was already kind of frustrated with this project. I wanted it to be over, and I just wanted my doll to be able to look around. Um, but it really didn't sit long. I just thought to myself, well, I'll just grab some super glue, put it back together, no big deal. I'll let that dry and we'll carry on. At this point I'm trying to show off that the hole from one of the screws is where it actually snapped. Um, again, that's where I'm mentioning that I feel like the extra screws aren't really necessary. They just kind of reduce the structure. I went back up to the top half to kind of revisit how I wanted to handle that piece. I knew that I was probably going to take as many pieces out of the equation as I could to increase stability and just reduce my headache of trying to manipulate everything together. And I ended up breaking uh, the top half. So this is where I ended up popping off the tab, I guess, from the spring. Look at this. Anyway, again, not a huge setback. At this point, I didn't even care. I was just trying to get it together however I could. And I ended up <laughs> gluing it together and calling it good. While I had my hot glue gun out, I had the idea, why don't I glue the spacers to the actual springs as well to, again, take out more of a hassle, I guess. Originally, the felt was there, I think, to give the plastic some friction so it shouldn't slide around as much. However, it's just a lot of hoping and wishing that gravity and pressure work in your favor, and for me, that was not happening. So I figured I would take the spacers that fit on the back of the eyes and just glue them to the springs. Um, that gave me a little bit more wiggle room and reduced my chance of dropping pieces, I guess. I went from, what was that, four pieces down to just two. And I felt like I had a better chance of getting things to go where I wanted them to go versus trying to hold it all together, if that makes any sense. At this point, I'm ready to go. So I've got my piece back together, all hot glued, all super glued, whatever the case may be. It's all one piece. Great. Thank you, hot glue. Um, here, I'm placing it back in the head. 
keeping in mind that I'm going to need space between the actual mechanic and the vinyl head to allow my eyes to slide in and out. With that, I'm applying my hot glue yet again. Um, this point, I'm not really caring too much about the silver screws, and I'm going to place this in the head about a centimeter further back than what I originally did. Now, if you're going to get this, I'm going to let you know that it sits up on the curve of the head. It doesn't sit down as low as you would think. Originally, I placed it right next to where the neck hole is, and if you ever get this item, you're going to kind of see how it sits down there pretty well. Um, but I ignored that. I just tried to place it and line it up with the actual eye holes. As you can see right here, I'm trying to get those as equally spaced and evenly spaced as possible. All right, so I've given the hot glue a bit of time to cool off, so I'm more confident in taking out the top section and giving it another go. Uh, this time around, if you notice, I'm able to just place the eyes on the mechanism and put them in the head. This is so much easier than trying to pull back the peg of the spring and slide it in the hole. It's just there was too much going on before for me to handle. So taking out all the extra pieces was just a lot easier and worked much better for me personally. Um, yeah. Y'all, words cannot describe how accomplished I felt after getting this all to work. I was about done with this project. I started this project thinking it was going to be a simple five minute installation and that is not the case. This took me a good almost hour and a half to get working right. I had to think outside the box and set aside the original video instructions. I kept those in mind at the end um, and kind of used it as a guideline but I'm pretty sure this item is going to be really personalized for everyone's individual doll. I mean all doll head shapes are going to be slightly different eyes, depending on what company you get them from, are going to be different. The spacing is going to be different. So just keep that in mind if you do pick up this item. I highly recommend it, but it is going to take a little bit of personalized finagling to get it into your doll head. But once you do, look at that movement. It's so great. I love it. I've had it in for about, mm, I'd say two weeks now, and I have had no issues. You know what the weirdest part of making a video like this is? It's like doing the intro and the outro together with no like innards because you've already filmed the innards previously and it's all just like, I haven't really done anything but I'm gonna start talking about the end of the video now. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna jump into a couple things that I wanted to really talk about. The item itself, um, my experience with the creator, the whole transaction and everything like that. So purchasing this item is a little bit hmm, different than normal purchases online. If you're familiar with third party items for your doll and just specific individual artists making things, you're kind of used to this process, but for the grand scheme of things, it's not just going to a website, clicking on this and putting it in your cart. Um, you send an inquiry to this person via email, they will send you back a um, PayPal request, you'll pay them, and then you wait. There's not really a website, there's not really a review, there's just the one video to go off of. I've had nothing but a pleasant experience from this person. Um, the creator was friendly, they were prompt, they answered my email quickly, which the video was posted several years ago, so I wasn't even sure if it was still a thing that I could buy. They were even open to suggestions on how to make it better. They asked what doll model I had, what head sculpt I was putting it in, and if I would want to change anything to make a better product overall. So they're actively trying to make this product better. It's not perfect, you saw in the video, I had to finagle it. However, everything I got with the um, kit allowed me to make a custom item for my personal doll head. Um, I had a lot of issues with getting the package from my post to me. They actually delivered it to the wrong house, the tracking was messed up. There was a lot of things that weren't the creator's fault. Um, it was just the transition from Hong Kong post over to our post. Um, and I was messaging them along the entire way just so they would be kind of up to date and response quickly every day. I'm ranting, overall communication was great. Next I wanted to talk about a comparison between my previous item and now my current item. I don't feel like I really need to talk much about it because you saw the difference, the range of motion with the Dolphy Dreamfitter versus the range of motion with the eye mechanic. The range of motion for the eye mechanism is just much better, 10 out of 10 to the eye mechanism. I don't know, three stars for the Dolphy Dream Fitter. What I will say is I do prefer the Dolphy Dream stick versus the eye mechanism stick. Here they are up close, hopefully you can kind of see. Both get the job done, okay? I'm not saying that this one doesn't. However, I have a lot more real estate and a lot more tool with this guy. I think this was about 10 US dollars from the website and you can buy it separately. The 
the Dream Fitter and the Dream Fitter Stick are two separate items. So you can still pick this up. And I, I love it. This big guy is great for turning the eye and moving it, and this smaller one is great for just final little adjustments. Now, this, the stick that comes with your eye mechanism, it does work. I can move it around and get what I need done, but I feel like I have a better control with the Volks stick. All right, so overview, if you're into doll photography and you like different angles and you like different eye positions, I highly recommend this item. 10 out of 10, would recommend, go buy it. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will attempt to get to them. However, YouTube interface confuses the ever-living out of me and I probably will take a second to respond. If you need a quick response, send me a DM on um, Instagram. You could send me something on DeviantArt. I check that relatively often. Even though it's a dead website, it's fine. You can find me on Doll Dreamy, Den of Angels, all of that under SDR Cow. So again, if you need anything, shoot me a message. I'll do my best to answer it. And uh, yeah, have a great day.